We live in a multi-storey world. Buildings everywhere seem to be getting taller and taller, reaching ever further into the sky. These towering environments are filled with steps and stairs, fire escapes and ladders. They are brimming with contraptions such as escalators, elevators and lifts to take us up and down in the modern world. It is thought that the word story, as in multi-story, comes from medieval times where each successive floor in a building revealed its function or story, like turning the pages in a book. Up and down, above and below, are bodily significant notions, and therefore have social implications. It is possible to dramatically change your outlook on the world by moving up or down. This changes your relationship with space, objects and people, simply by changing your perspective. It is tempting to conceive of this third dimension, multi-storey thinking, as a relatively recent notion. But archaeology suggests that up and down, above and below, have always played a role in our lives. The Mesolithic in Europe saw a change in the relationship between people and the landscape in which they lived. It is at this time that tribal graveyards begin to emerge, the dead below rooting the living to the land laying claim, now and forever, to hunting rights hereabouts. In the Mesolithic of the Iron Gates Gorge in Serbia, the site of Lepensky Vir is particularly interesting. Here, for around 2,000 years, people lived in trapezoidal houses by the riverside, and beneath many of these dwellings were human burials, the shape of the burial reinforcing the shape of the house. As well as the contrast between inside and out, the people of Lepensky Vir would have been well aware that they lived above what was below. In the early Neolithic, tell sites are relatively common. These are sites where subsequent generations build houses upon the footings of those which have gone before. Eventually a small mound or tell develops, such as Tel es Sultan at Jericho. Starting around 9600 BC, the tell built up over the space of 3000 years. Not only did people build again and again, up and up, but beneath their floors they kept elements of the dead, skulls plastered and painted, almost like living faces. In this way, the people of Jericho had a relationship with what was below them, where they were now, and where the tell would grow. Probably the most famous tell in the world is Chatel Hoyuk in Anatolia, Turkey. Here, one of the largest ongoing excavations in the world is uncovering a tell which built up between 7500 and 5700 BC. Access to the dwellings of Chatel Hoyuk was gained through a hole in the roof and a ladder. Here, the whole community had an extremely complicated relationship with up, down, above, below, and the growth of the tell itself. Around 5500 BC, the Neolithic linear band ceramic culture spread across much of Europe, one of the diagnostic features being the wooden longhouses in which people lived. All that tends to remain of these structures in archaeology are the post holes left in the soil. Some posts were larger than others and may have been supporting modest upper floors on the ends of the longhouses. Whether for sleeping or storage, these may just be some of the earliest constructed upper floors in history. Around 2000 BC, in the Bronze Age of Crete, the Minoan Palace of Knossos was very impressive. It comprises a labyrinthine mass of workrooms, living spaces and storerooms close to a central square. Linear B tablets recovered from the site record the mass storage of goods, objects and livestock within the complex. The palace of Knossos relied upon multiple stories to store goods and convey its power to the world around it. The ancient Pueblo people were a Native American culture located in the Four Corners region of the southwestern United States. The name Pueblo comes from Spanish explorers who marveled at their settlements and named them the Spanish for village. Dating to the 12th century BC, many of these remarkable multi-storey structures were carved into the cliff face, such as at the Mesa Verde National Park, and designed so that entry ladders could be retracted during enemy attack. Flash forward a thousand years to the Iron Age of Northern Scotland, and dwellings with similar purpose were being constructed. The people were building dry stone, hollow-walled, multi-storey towers called brochs. 
By building upwards, people had made all in one storage and living places, defendable and impressive, often located near cliffs or at key points in the landscape. When we think of buildings in the Roman world, most think of villas, luxurious and on one level. But in urban centres such as Ostia and Rome, most people lived in apartment blocks up to and beyond ten storeys tall. And in the Roman province of Africa, villas were often built above and below ground, the structure below mirroring the structure above, with the advantage of being cool in the summer and warm in the winter. Here in Britain, the latter first millennium AD saw the arrival of Saxons and Vikings. Their homes are often conceived as being simple affairs, one room, above ground, with a roof. However, the famous Coppergate excavation in York, and subsequent excavations in York and Dublin, say otherwise. Here, evidence of strong, timber-lined cellars have been found. Doubtless these were used for storage, and as the population in these busy trade centres began to grow, the newer homes began to acquire second floors. Let us stay in York for a moment and examine the Shambles, one of the finest medieval streets in all of Europe. One of the key features of this wonderful road is the way the buildings seem to lean into the street. This stems from a time when the land, the footprint of a building, was heavily taxed by the crown or the local authority. Residents devised cunning ways of squeezing extra untaxed inches from their plots of land by making upper floors larger than the ones below them. Indeed, the precarious medieval practice of building upon major bridges led to all manner of wondrous multi-storey constructions. And of course we must mention the other medieval mainstay, going down in the world to infamous oubliette, forgettable dungeons. There is a myriad of examples from the archaeological world, too many to fully explore here, of people living above and below, for various reasons and with various cultural connotations. Sometimes, as in 17th century China, people are brought together for defence, and other times upstairs and downstairs will separate a family from their servants. Building upwards has often been a search for the divine, and occasionally we are reminded that such ambitions are fighting against gravity itself. But we must never, in this modern era, make the mistake of thinking we have mastered the art of multi-story living. After all, some of the greatest social failures of the 20th century have been a result of building upwards. Indeed, perhaps we should look back to the past to understand why and how people tackled the unique challenges of above and below. <laughs>